Hi, and welcome to the Family Voices Nuts and Bolts of Telemedicine series. Today we will be talking about a topic called, Are You Connected? This is the first in a four-part series covering the essentials for a family-centered telemedicine experience. We'd like to start off by thanking our funders, HRSA specifically at the Department of Health and Human Services. This webinar series was put together as part of an award totaling, totaling $1 million financed with um, governmental sources and 0% with non-governmental sources. Again, the contents are those of the authors and family voices and do not necessarily represent the official views of nor endorsement by HRSA or the US government. For more information, you can go to their website at hrsa.gov. Let's start off with a quote. In an age where the average consumer manages nearly all aspects of life online, it's a no brainer that healthcare should be just as convenient, accessible and safe as online banking. So today, what are we gonna talk about? Some of the things we'll discuss include telewhat. You might be thinking, what is telemedicine? We're gonna cover that. We're gonna talk about the Fab Four, which are the four topics covered in this webinar series. We're gonna define what being connected means. We're gonna talk about words like data, cellular, broadband and internet. And then we're gonna talk about alternative ways to connect and how to test your connection, and then how to enhance your connection. So I hope you'll join us. Let's talk about some of the learning objectives for this first webinar. Are you connected? At the conclusion of this webinar, we hope that you will be able to determine if you are connected for a telemedicine appointment, answering yes or no. Number two, identify two different options for getting connected if you find out that you are not connected right now. And objective three, demonstrate one way to test your connection and one way to improve your connection or enhance your connection if you are connected. So let's get to that topic of telewhat. In this series, we're gonna be talking about telemedicine. This word telemedicine is often used interchangeably with the word telehealth, which we're gonna define in a moment. But technically, it is focused on the clinical aspects of care, such as a video appointment with your child's pediatrician or a virtual therapy session with your young adult speech therapist. These are all examples of telemedicine. Another word, as we've said, that is sometimes used interchangeably with telemedicine is telehealth but it's a bit broader. That's why it has a bigger circle here. Telehealth is the use of electronic information and telecommunication technologies to support a number of things like long distance clinical healthcare, um, patient and provider um, education, and public health and health administration. Some of the technologies included in telehealth include video conferencing, use of the internet, store and forward imaging, media and terrestrial and wireless communications. In an even broader uh, circle, there is the term that you might hear called digital and connected health. This is a broader uh, sphere or circle here because it can include the use of anything that's digital, mobile, wearable, or even other technologies that facilitate the tracking and monitoring of the health status or behavior of someone, but it's outside the clinical encounter. So it's outside that telemedicine appointment. The goal of this digital and connected health is to foster more patient-centered, technology-enabled, enabled, and insight-driven healthcare. As I said, we are going to focus today on telemedicine. And our series, the Fab Four, will cover four different aspects of telemedicine. Here we are with number one, are you connected? The next webinar series will talk about, do you have a device? The third in the series will talk about, can you see your provider? 
And finally, the fourth one, we'll talk about your family's first telemedicine appointment and tips and tidbits on how to make that the best appointment possible for your family. So let's talk about that topic of being connected. What does being connected really mean? It really is the ability to send and receive data, which is illustrated here by these little dots through space. So let's imagine these two houses. Maybe one is your family and the other one is uh, uh, your friend of your family. Sending data through space includes being able to send the data, which is the top arrow, and also receive the data, um, which is the bottom arrow. Let's dig into this a little bit further. So what is data and how much of it do I spend? Again, data are those little dots or pieces of information sent through space. But it can also be things like your voice on a telephone call. And that's a very small amount of data, here represented by just one of those dots. You might send a text message, that's also data. Maybe a little, couple more dots. When you send an email, that's data and is represented by a couple more dots here because it's a little bit more data than that voice or phone call. If you post a photo on social media, again, you're sending data, but photos have a lot of data within them. So that's even takes more dots. And then finally, we get to a video call or a telemedicine appointment with your doctor. That is video, voice, possibly pictures. So that takes up a lot of data as shown here with the pile of dots. You might be wondering how data is measured. Or do we really measure it in dots? We're representing it here with dots, but it's measured by a word called bits with a little b. Think of it as little bits of data to help you remember. A bit is a small amount or a small unit of data used to measure speed. And a byte, you'll sometimes hear with a big b, is made up of eight bits. Let's watch this video here to learn more. Shopping around for internet, you've probably noticed that plan speeds are measured in MBPS. But what are MBPS and how many do you need? MBPS stands for megabits per second. A bit is a tiny piece of data and a megabit is many, many tiny pieces of data, not to be confused with megabytes. Megabits are what is used to measure your download speed. The higher the number of megabits, the faster your internet will be. So, how many megabits per second do you need? Checking emails and browsing the internet usually uses only a small amount of data. A little more data is needed for apps like FaceTime or Skype. If you stream TV shows, download big movie files, or watch live sport, you'll be using a whole lot more data. And if everyone in the house is internet streaming, gaming, and everything in between, you're going to need more megabits per second to keep everyone connected at the same time. So, how much? Well... So how much many bits do you need? We've made this flowchart, which is available as a separate resource uh, to you to figure out if you're connected, but also to figure out how many bits um, you need for a telemedicine appointment. So you can see here it asks a couple questions like do you have a cell phone, do you have internet service at home or cellular service, and we're going to dig into this a little bit further as we go through this webinar to talk about how you know if you have enough bits and if your speed is fast enough to have a telemedicine appointment. But let's pause for a moment and share a family story because there are places in the United States on the reservations and in the territories where people are not connected and there are no um, signals for data available uh, to be able to connect with a telemedicine appointment or for doing other things like making a cellular phone call or sending an email. One of this, the examples of this is some families who live on the Navajo Nation are not connected um, by cellular or internet signals. And during the pandemic, it was found that 40 families were identified by one local school district um, as needing a connection so that they could do schooling remotely. However, when it was uh, looked into further, only 10 of those were in locations that could actually receive service. 
Some of the reasons the people could not receive service is because of location, a lack of towers or cables to carry the signal, and the locations were, were some of them were out of the provider's area where um, there was service avail available. So while we're talking about uh, connection, it's important to remember that some people are in places that there is no connection. And that's the very reason we're talking about it here um, so that we can uh, make sure that everyone has access to telemedicine and telehealthcare. So let's talk about two main types of connection. You've probably heard some of these words. Cellular is one type of connection that you can use for telemedicine and internet or broadband is another term that's often used for a type of connection for telemedicine. We're gonna dig into these a little bit further. Let's talk about cellular and watch this video to understand what cellular or mobile means. Radio technology to transmit and receive a signal. But unlike a water cooled loop, phones don't connect directly with each other. If they did, there wouldn't be enough frequencies available and the signals would clash. So a mobile phone network is comprised of a series of cells with a receiving mast in each, hence the American term cell phones. When you speak into a mobile phone, a microphone turns your voice into an electric signal. This signal is turned into radio waves by a transmitter, which beams those waves to the nearest mast. The mast receives the signal and sends it on through the network's infrastructure until it reaches the mast nearest the person you're calling. From there, it's a short transmission to your friend's phone. In this fashion, the whole range of radio frequencies is available in each cell, meaning that multiple people can use the same frequency in many cells but the frequencies are finite. If you have a large number of people using their phones all at once in a single cell, the network in that cell can become blocked. That's why it's very difficult to make a call at midnight on New Year's Eve. So now that you know a little bit more about how a mobile or cellular phone works, let's talk about some other words that are important when we talk about cellular. We've already talked about data as being small pieces of information sent through space or wires. Um, but sometimes with cellular, you'll hear, hear things referred to minutes. Those are usually pay-as-you-go services for a specific amount of phone time or minutes that you're talking on your phone. You'll also hear the term data plan. These are services offered by mobile or cellular carriers that allow users to access 4G and 5G networks. We'll talk about those in just a second. And usually these data plans charge per amount of data sent and received via your cellular or mobile device. 4 and 5G are just terminology used for the current standard of cellular networks. 5G is the fifth generation 5G and is the newest uh, generation of cellular network technology. It's begin being, begun being rolled out in 2020. Now let's switch gears and talk about internet and broadband. This video will define some of those terms for us. is different from dial-up access. To connect using dial-up, your computer makes a call on your phone line to connect you to your internet service provider. The dial-up internet connection is good for only as long as the call lasts. Hey, can I use the phone now? Broadband connections, however, are typically on all the time and are much faster than dial-up. Many of today's internet activities and opportunities require a broadband connection. High-speed internet allows large amounts of information, data, to move quickly over the World Wide Web for a reliable, seamless, real-time experience. In general, broadband refers to telecommunication 
where a wide band of frequencies is available to transmit information. Broadband is often measured in terms of bits per second. Typically, you see either kilobits per second or megabits per second, describing the speed of a broadband connection. If you watch a movie online, from Netflix for instance, you need to have a line of at least 700 kilobits per second. If you make a Skype video call on your computer, you need a connection of at least 1.2 megabits per second. And if you want a higher quality picture from Netflix, like what you get from a DVD, Netflix must send you data at a much higher rate, about three and a half times the minimum Netflix speed. But maybe you have just a dial-up connection. A common dial-up connection is just 56 kilobits per second. <laughs> How do people access broadband? People get broadband internet access by a number of methods, but typically they have either wired or wireless service. In wired service, you get an internet connection through cable lines or telephone lines. Wireless service, becoming increasingly popular, includes fixed wireless and mobile and cellular wireless. So then, now we know a little bit about what internet or broadband means. Let's talk about some other words that we probably need to know. So there's the word modem. Modem is a device that enables a computer to send and receive information over to normal telephone lines. A hotspot is a way for a um, user or an individual to connect wirelessly with a physical place or location um, and use their mobile devices. Wi-Fi is a term used um, for the connection of computers, cell phones, laptops, and other devices to the internet without a cable. So no cord for Wi-Fi. And last but not least is dial-up. This is what was illustrated in the video when the person was sitting at the computer and, and then somebody tapped him on the shoulder and asked to use the phone. That is because dial-up is a connection from your computer that goes through a regular telephone line to connect to the internet. And when you're using the regular telephone line that's hardwired to your house, you cannot make a telephone call using that wired telephone. So you might be wondering if you're watching this, what, am, what if I am not connected? What if I don't have the ability to do a telemedicine appointment because I don't have cellular and I don't have internet? We'd like to give you some options for getting connected in your community. Oftentimes community centers have internet connections that can be used by the members of a community. Even sometimes fast food restaurants have hot, act as hotspots, and if you buy food there, they let you use their internet. You might visit somewhere called somewhere like a cultural liaison hub or where um, individuals of um, a certain culture gather. Libraries are a great place to get connected in your community because many libraries have to have internet because so many of our resources are no longer in print but electronic and they oftentimes have um, private rooms or um, confidential places that you could go into a meeting room and have an appointment. Another option might be a gathering place in your community such as the general store or a chapter house. Coffee shops are notorious for having um, internet um, and Wi-Fi available, especially in the form of a hotspot where an individual can log in and utilize that, usually if you're a patron and, and purchase something from the establishment. The individuals that uh, uh, um, work with Family Voices have offices across the country and they also have um, internet provided. There's also other community providers, other um, organizations and agencies in your community that might offer internet to individuals to utilize. 
And then there's a program called Lifeline. This is not a physical place, even though it's denoted by a building here, but it is a program that helps individuals uh, pay for cellular um, communication and phone and phone line communication. So that might be something to look into if cost is an issue for you. And last but not least are, is our school systems because many of our schools are wired for um, internet connection and broadband connection. And some of the schools um, have the ability to share that with their community. So definitely reach out to your school district and ask. Now we've come to the part of the webinar where we're going to talk about testing your connection and trying to figure out if you are connected, how fast can you download or upload data? So the first step is to establish your connection. So you would get out your mobile phone or your computer and you would log on to the internet um, or you would access your cellular um, network on your, on your phone. Then you would open up a browser just like you would do a Google search or type you were going like you were going to type in a website. You would open up that web browser either on your phone or on your desk, desktop or laptop and then you would type in this website. It's really easy to remember fast.com F-A-S-T period C-O-M. When you type in fast.com a screen will show up. And that screen will have a number on it. So if you remember back to our talk about data earlier in this webinar, we talked about bits being little bits of data. And we talked about megabits per second being a way that you could measure the speed of your connection. These two examples here show two different, two very different speeds. Uh, your desktop, if it's wired into your internet connection at home and you pay extra for higher speed internet, you might have uh, numbers um, from you know, 100, 200, 300 megabits per second. If you're using your cell phone and you're on, three, you're on 4G or 5G networks, you might see something like um, one megabit per second to four to five. Um, it really varies depending on which type of signal you're using, what type of uh, device you're using, and also what type of, um, if you are wired or wireless at that, at that moment. But these numbers will help you determine if you have a fast enough connection to do a telemedicine appointment. So let's go back to that flow chart that we had shared with you earlier and that's available as a resource with this webinar series. Once you've figured out that you do have a connection, you want to go down to this part of the flowchart. If it's internet, we're going to be looking at the top, and if it's cellular, we're going to be looking at the bottom. But both are the same, really, because you're looking for a speed, you're looking for a number that pops up when you type fast.com that is greater than, that is bigger than the number 15. If it's bigger than 15, you have a fast connection. If it's less than 15, your connection is not necessarily slow, but it might not be the most stable connection for a telemedicine visit. It's not to say that you can't do a telemedicine visit, but speeds of 15 or greater are most ideal for a telemedicine appointment. Let's talk about ways you can enhance your connection. Say you have a lower number and you want to see if you can make that number a little bit stronger or more, or that, that the connection is more secure. Let's talk about some things that might help you get a stronger signal, signal for a better telemedicine appointment. So we want to talk about wired versus wireless. Wired is when you actually have a wire coming out of your wall and plugged into your computer um, to get an internet connection. This will usually result in a stronger signal versus what we call wireless, where the signal has to travel through space and is not traveling through a physical wire. Wireless signals can sometimes be weaker because they have to travel through space. And so it's preferred that you use a wired connection when possible. The other thing we wanna talk about that can enhance your connection is windows versus walls. 
Standing next to a window when using cellular specifically can oftentimes get you a stronger signal or more bars if you've seen the bars in the corner of your, of your cell phone versus something that blocks signals sometimes depending on what they're made of, which is walls. Walls can provide a physical barrier, as we know, from wind and hail and rain for us, but they also can provide a signal barrier um, for things like cellular and Wi-Fi signals. So your signal may be weaker, for instance, if you're in your basement versus if you're upstairs um, in your house near a window. And finally, I just wanna wrap up with this quote because as we've been talking about speeds, everything is going to get faster. So everything is, is moving to provide faster internet and faster cellular connections that um, allow more data to be transmitted. So in the words of Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us today for our Family Voices webinar, Are You Connected? If you need assistance in getting connected so you or your loved one can have a telemedicine visit, please reach out to the nearest Family Voices office in your state or territory or reservation. And that can be found here. A map can be found to give you that information at www.familyvoices.org. They're also on social media, so check them out there as well. Thank you so much for joining us, and we really hope that you will join us for our next webinar in, the, in our four-part telemedicine series. Thank you again.